This is the most important, groundbreaking plot forward episode ever. Star Wars Mandalorian has just been moved up to the next level. What's up, YouTubers of the world? Mega Geek Mixer here to give you guys my review on this week's episode of Star Wars The Mandalorian Season 2 title, The Jedi. That's right, guys, The Jedi, meaning Ahsoka Tano. We get the live action debut of Ahsoka Tano, played by none other, none other than Rosario Dawson. And man, does she kill it. She did an amazing job. Her standing pose as Ahsoka Tano, all the fighting, using the force, and everything else she did in this episode was memorable. No doubt she had a great time. After all this time of voicing Ahsoka, she actually is Ahsoka, and she enjoyed it. No doubt about that. Just as she enjoyed being able to c communicate and be around in the doing those scenes with not Mando, but the child who, believe it or not, guys, we actually finally know his name. The child's name is Grogor. Grogor. Yes, Grogor, guys. After all this time of calling it the child or baby Yoda, 13 episodes of Star Wars The Mandalorian. Finally, we have the little one's name. And I gotta say, nice name for the little guy, considering how we seen him act and everything, that really fits him. But still, the fact that we got that alone, along with so much other stuff, it's just insane. But I'm going to just go ahead, let's go ahead and break this down. First, by talking about the star of the episode, Ahsoka Tano. As I said, Rosario Dawson. And yeah, just so you guys know, this episode, directed by the creator of Ahsoka Tano, Dave Filoni. Beautifully done, written and directed by this guy. He did an amazing job. But now having said that, this really does help us in learning more of what Ahsoka's been up to. Because as as we all know, Mandalorian said after the return of the Empire. And yeah, it turns out she's still on her mission to find Ezra. And she might have already found a clue to finding Ezra. Because it turns out that in this episode, she's on a mission to to find some, I mean, I'm not on a mission, well, she is on a mission to, in a sense, a liberate a village, but also to get their boss, the, the one who's terrorizing and taking control of the village, to give her information on someone she, she's looking for. And yeah, you may think I'm seeing Ezra, but I'm not. It's someone who can lead her to Ezra. And that is actually Grand Admiral Thrawn. That's right, guys. She's looking for Grand Admiral Thrawn, who my guess is maybe he has Ezra captured or something. Or maybe she... Or maybe she's feeling that knowing that he was with Ezra the last time we saw in Star Wars Rebels, then he's the best chance she has of finding Ezra. Now, does this mean that by chance we could see Ezra, maybe not in this season, but next season? If so, I'm all in for it. I'd just like to see who will play him. Will it be the same person who who um acted as him, who did the voice acting for him. I hope so. That'll be awesome. But ask for this person that she was facing. I do feel a little bad for her. The antagonist for this episode is a girl is a woman by the name of Morgan Isabel, aka Ma uh, main strain or something like that. All I, all you need to know is she was terrorizing the village, like ruling it like a triton, pretty much like how the empire was ruling the galaxy. And what, why do I say I feel sorry for her? Well, because her, with her, well, let's just say that her past, it's just pretty much could be just as tragic as what happened with Trafalgar Law in One Piece. Why do I say that? Well, because it turns out she's a survivor of a massacre that happened during the Clone Wars. Unfortunately, though, that scarred that woman badly to where her anger consumed her. And then she grew up to become a person who just plundered and destroyed worlds. And no doubt that caught the attention of the Empire because it did. As Ahsoka was explaining her history, she admitted that she helped the Empire build its Starfleet. She aided the Empire in building its Starfleet. Now, that's not saying she's the only one. I'm sure she, 
she, he, along with others, have been a part, been responsible for that. But the mere fact that it happened to her, yes, I can't help but feel sorry for her. But does that mean that I would not stop her? I would not fight her or anything to stop her what she's doing? Heck no. I would do exactly what Ahsoka did. Because no doubt, Ahsoka felt bad for her too. But she seemed that there's no talking to her. This is the path that woman chose and she has to be stopped. But that still doesn't mean that Ahsoka can't feel bad for her. And yes, speaking of Ahsoka, another thing I forgot to mention is she's grown up to be a great Jedi. The way she interacts with Mando and the child, and then later on when she tries to test to see if she can train Gorgo, it really shows how, that she has become a great Jedi. And again, Anakin trained her, trained her pretty good on some levels, but it's when she let the order that she trained truly became the Jedi she was meant to be. Because it turns out that, first off, it was because of her we learned of Grogor's name, and she helped us in learning of Grogor's history. It turns out that he was actually a part of the Jedi Temple. He was a part of the Jedi Order. Now, first off, that's no surprise that he lived even during the Clone Wars. We all knew about that. But we just all didn't know, was he from the same, did he come from the planet that Yoda's from, or what? But now we find out, no, he was in the Jedi Temple all along, and he was trained by multiple masters everywhere. But, unfortunately, when the Empire came, oh boy, that was just like all Jedi who survived Order 66, dark times for this kid. And now this kid, he didn't get executed in Order 66. Some people who had trained him before were smart enough to know that that kid needed to be hidden, hidden away from the Empire so they wouldn't find him. Unfortunately, they have found him and they're hunting him now. But still, before then, smart on those Jedi for knowing to do that. And yet, like all Jedi who survived Order 66 or went into hiding, nothing but dark times for Gregor because he was alone, lost, no one for him. He just was scared his entire during that entire time. It wasn't until Mando showed up that he finally felt safe because it turns out he had been hiding his abilities all those years. No surprise, like all other Jedi, hide the abilities, really only try to use it in a sneaky way so no one could see you, see you, or figure you out. But nope, not when he finally met Mando. And yes, this episode also defines everything that their relationship has been through. Because as I said, Ahsoka's become an even wiser Jedi than what she was because she notices that Grogor is attached to Mando, very attached to him, formed a strong attachment. And it's because of that she realized she couldn't train him. This is where it led her to telling Mando about what can happen with people who form strong attachments with people. And then the fact that his attachment to Mando Gorgor, his attachment to him, that could be his vulnerability to something that she fears that could happen to him if she trains him. And that's his anger. Basically, the dark side. <laughs> Which, by the way, you could say that's what happened with Morgan. She fell to the dark side. But either way, though, and she's not wrong there. I can, I mean, let's face it. If Mando's gone, can we just imagine what how Grogor would feel, the anger, all the hate inside of him would just probably explode. I mean, yes, she he has people like, say, Grief Karga and Cara Dune, who could pretty much be like an aunt and uncle to him, if you want to put it that way. But that would not, but she, they don't hold a strong attachment to him like he does with Mando. So knowing that, let's say if something happened to Mando, just imagine what hap how that kid would feel. I mean, sure, out of curiosity, a dark side, a dark side creature of Yoda's species, especially Grogor, would be interesting, but at the same time, wouldn't be a pleasant thing at all. Not for a minute. But hey, let's also continue to move on. Knowing that he, he had, it's his mission to send him off to a Jedi, and knowing that she's not doing it, he decides to help her in trying to rescue the village from from Morgan. And yes, this leads into some really awesome fight scenes. First off with Ahsoka Tano as she's fighting using the force, her lightsaber, lightsaber skills, all that, and especially her usual stance. Boy, did I love seeing that. 
And I loved how when she entered the village and just started walking up to him. Such a badass Jedi. Man, how much has Soka grown and stuff over those years. I know I keep saying that, but I'm just stunned by it. And then how she's able to fight through all these guys was something else. And then, of course, though, there's Manda who joined in on the fight. And this led into two different styles of fighting. Both that defined them as both a Jedi style of fighting and a Mandalorian style of fighting. First off, you got Ahsoka, who ended up fighting, who ended up fighting Morgan, who had a weapon that she was gonna give to Mando when she tried to get him to kill Ahsoka, and that was a staff that was made of Baskar. Yes, Baskar. Don't be surprised by that, guys. Baskar is all over the galaxy now. It may belong to the Mandalorians, but since it's all over the galaxy now, some of them who have them have made them in some shape or forms for something. And she did it for a staff, which led into a battle between two lightsabers and a Baskar staff. And what a great battle that was. While on Mando's side, you had him fighting the hired gunfighter, who both of them were in more of a Western-style standoff to make the la to make the first shot like a quick draw style. And yeah, Mando did not try to play dumb and make that guy believe he was believing him when he was trying to convince him he doesn't like what he's doing. But no, Mando didn't believe that. And bam, guys out of there. Oh, what a great episode. And I especially loved how in the fact that Mando said a Jedi and Mandalorian working together, they won't see it coming. Because most people in the known gap in the galaxy, if not a lot of people besides some Mandalorians and Jedi know, Jedi are and Mandalorians are natural enemies, which in most cases are true and in other cases not so true. It's kind of complicated now, especially with some of the Jedi's and Mandalorians we've seen working together. Makes sense why it could be kind of complicated there. But either way, the fact that those two work together and their style of fighting was awesome nonetheless. But in the end, even though even though he had held up his end of the bargain, help her rescue rescue that village. She like we all knew, Ahsoka knew that the child belongs with Mando because as she told Mando, Groger sees him as a father and she can't train him. But she did give us a clue as to what's going to happen with the plot going forward. Now, because first off, no, Moff Gideon wasn't in this episode, surprisingly to me. I thought he made his move, but maybe it'll be next episode or episode 7. Either way, though, when he does make his move, you can expect we'll be seeing Ahsoka again to work with him to take her to rescue the kid. But either way, when he told her, when I mean, when she told him that Gorgor sees him as a father, he knew that's when she gave him the task of going to the planet of Typho, where a temple is at, where she at, tells him to put him there so he can find his own path, choose his own path. But I think we already know what that path is. It's pretty obvious, is it not? And that path is him being with Mando and pretty much becoming a Mandalorian. But does that mean he'll keep his powers? I don't know. Will he still keep his force ability powers? Maybe to a certain degree, but he'll probably still be a Mandalorian more than a Jedi. Which, by the way, I'm all good with that. But you know what, guys? I'm going to just go ahead and leave it all at that. And hey, if you enjoy my videos, all you got to do is click that like button, subscribe to the channel, hit the bell icon to be notified when I make more videos. And until then, Mega Geek Mixer, signing out. Bye!